Readings and good morning from Basswood Resort in Platte City, Missouri. Today we continue the route east towards the mothership, Winnebago Tobles of Middlebury, Indiana, but we're still a long way from there. We might visit some famous people like Mark Twain and Abe Lincoln along the way because that's what you do. Cause I'm free in my RV, yeah. Well, good morning. And, uh, no, we haven't done much. We haven't done much in the in terms of sightseeing uh, in this area. I've been, I mean, I've been in the Kansas City area for five days. And all I have to show you was that that trip to, to downtown we did for some barbecue. And, you know, then I drove around, but... I've done a lot of behind the scenes stuff, you know. I've, uh, I edited a whole video, several videos actually, and some housekeeping, you know. I, I went to get a, a, an oil change done on the Colorado and um, I've done laundry, things like that. And now let's, let's go for a walk along the campground because I haven't even seen the campground. And this is a, a pretty, look at that, the sun rising. And it's kind of foggy, so it's it's very nice. Um, it's a nice place. Let's go down to the lake. I don't know if it is still the the smoke from the fires, but you know, there's still the the, the sun still has that hazy look that that we had. Out west. I came back to put on my hoodie. It's uh, it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Autumn is in the air for sure. Today, it's, I've been on the road for two months, exactly. It's been two months since I left uh, in Miami, since the Providence Canyon episode. The resort is actually really nice when it comes to scenery and all these lakes. Very peaceful when it is kind of empty like this. Lots of activities during the weekend, but during the week, it's been kind of dead. This, this place is huge. It keeps going that way, and now we're going back this way. Much tighter sides up here. I think these are more permanent. That's us down there, site number one. Look what just arrived, crowd cow. Know your farmer, eat better meat. And that's exactly what this is. It is a marketplace for high quality meats and seafood where you get to know and appreciate exactly where the food comes from. And you can build your own box. So let me show you what we got this month. I'm so excited and hungry too. By the way, it comes very nicely packaged in dry ice and every cut comes vacuum sealed and frozen at the peak of its freshness. And uh, let me get some of this out. We've got some lobster tails. We've got some Arctic char. Oh, this bacon. Last time I had this bacon, it was awesome. We've got some uh, Painter Hills natural beef tenderloin steak, some ground cow and ground lamb, wild Alaska sockeye. Mm, let's do this. 
Let me tell you, I wish you could smell this. And by the way, this is the good stuff. No hormones, everything is either wild caught in the case of the fish. We had some yesterday, delicious, uh, or pasture raised, or the beef is grass fed. So yeah, great selection. Oh yeah, that's gonna be so good. Join the herd. Click my link, crowdcow.com slash traveling Robert in the description box below to get $15 off your first order. You can also save an extra 5% if you become a member, which is always the best deal. Use my code and the membership is free. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hmm. Oh yeah. Well, it's been one of those mornings, uh, you know, that could have gone really south, but it didn't. Well, I had my, in six years of RVing, probably my worst uh, sewer incident. Uh, that the hole on the ground was completely plugged up and stuff started gushing out, you know, because it, it didn't lock uh, either. You know, it's one of those, like the thread is not there anymore. <sighs> I don't want to talk about it but eventually I finished my dump at the next site <laughs> I put propane and this Brasswood country uh, in our V resort I mean it's not bad it's huge it's one of these places that has all kinds of activities and amenities Continue on inner urban but for one mile. when a place is so big and so large sometimes they uh, they lack in other aspects like it's a little bit some things are seem a little bit run down and the staff perhaps not the friendliest. I mean, they're fine, they're okay. They, they, they'll, but it's not you know, that, you know, hospitality that sometimes you expect. <sighs> but it was good. It was a little over $60 a night or something like that. Fairly expensive, but we're right now, we're very close to Kansas City. And uh, all I needed was a site with full hookups near the airport. And um, so I could work too. And I got a lot of work done, a lot of things done that I didn't show you. I, I, I took the Colorado to the Chevy dealership for an oil change and um, what else? I, you know, all the stuff that I had to do. Now we need to do groceries and put gas and we go, we're gonna go straight across the entire state of Missouri. That's the plan anyways. We'll see if we can camp on the banks of the, of the Mississippi River. That'll be cool. I've been to this area twice already. Once during the great hurricane detour in summer 2019, and at that time we visited Hannibal. And uh, six weeks ago, we stayed at Wakanda State Park. And on both of those occasions, I meant to visit the birthplace of one of my favorite childhood authors, Mark Twain. By the way, here's Mark Twain Lake. We're almost there. And here we are. Unfortunately, the visitor center is closed today. Let's do the Barefoot Sam Trail. Well, this is... Uh I don't know exactly the place, but this is the area where where Mark Twain was born. Good old Samuel Clem Clemens. It's a beautiful lake, actually. Oh, what's that bird? It's a pelican! And I'm walking a short trail here. It's called the Barefoot Sam Trail. And who this Sam is, you might ask. Samuel Clemens. 
Mark Twain himself. This is his birthplace. Apparently, the, the visitor center is closed today. I think they only open Thursday through Sunday or something like that. But yeah, it's, a, it's a half mile loop trail. And I decided to do it. It's very pretty out here. Uh, this wooded area. Actually, I really like Missouri. I've decided I'm, I'm bumping up Missouri to to probably one of my top 10 states. I have to visit in uh, in winter, just in case, but yeah, I like it. Can you imagine young uh, Sam running around barefoot around here? And the lake is right there, right there. That's the lake. Very nice, very pleasant, this trail, if it wasn't for, for all the spider webs. I don't think uh, anybody has done this trail in a while. <laughs> all right, so this uh, was Mark Twain's birthplace. I was hoping to see like a reproduction of his uh, house or something like that. Maybe they have it inside the visitor center, which is closed. Uh, and I knew it, it was gonna be closed. It's, uh, it only opens cer for half a mile. certain days of the week. And, um, but that, that was a cool trail. I stretched my legs, you know, it's, it's always good to stretch your legs uh, in the middle of the trip, like, like we're doing now. I should have made me some coffee, but I'm gonna make me some coffee at the next stop, which is supposed to be uh, a giant statue of, uh, of Samuel himself. Remember that RV park I discovered back in August near Canton, Missouri? The one called Mississippi Park, right on the west bank of the Mississippi? Well, that's where we're going. Driving to the east and going home I have been away for too long I said I was gonna stop by this giant Mark Twain sculpture, but I think it looks better from the road, so we're gonna continue. And here we are, by Hannibal. But I think, once again, we're going to save Mark Twain's boyhood home for another time. When I cross the Mississippi, I'm more than halfway home. I'm getting tired, I'm getting sleepy, I've been away for too long. Here we are. Let's look for that Mississippi Park RV campground. It is through here. It is basically self-service. They have this list of the reserved campsites, which by the way, you can reserve by calling the police department. But if you just show up like I did, you find a vacant one and just go there. Okay, here we are. We've made it to the shores of the mighty Mississippi River and uh, I forgot exactly who was the viewer who gave me a tip on this place, but it's it's really cool and supposedly you can see like the barges coming up and down the river. I'm gonna be on the lookout for that. It's twenty dollars a night, and you actually you just write a check to the city of Canton, Canton, Missouri, and then you deposit the check over there at the. They have an envelope. I'm gonna show you right now. Very cool place, the, the mighty Mississippi River, you know. What are, when are you gonna get a chance to camp right next to the, to the Great River for 20 bucks? Here we go, no cash, it has to be a check. And here they have a, a list with the available sites and instructions and all that stuff. 
I'm on pad number five, which if I really wanted to stay until Friday, I could. I don't recall when was the last time I wrote a check, actually. Yeah, very nice, very nice, I like it. We've got water and electric, and a dam station, and the Mississippi River, all for $20. What's cool about this RV park? We get to see the barges coming down the river. Going up the river, I should say. It is going to be another one of those hazy sunsets. Could it still be from the fire southwest? All the way out here? Of course, there had to be a train, right? I believe this would be my first Mississippi River sunrise. There are always barges going up and down the busy river. I wonder what that is, some kind of buoy, perhaps? In any case, this was a very nice stay here at Mississippi Park, here in Canton, Missouri. And today we're going to continue on to Illinois. Okay, let's go. What a great RV park here. It's, it's, I think it's called Mississippi River Park. All right, let's go uh, visit Lincoln. I don't know if I'm gonna do the, 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 the Lincoln Library. I would love, I would love to do the Lincoln Library, but I don't know if with COVID, if it's gonna be open or not. Just, I, I might just, uh, you know, walk around the, the, the Capitol area, the, the Capitol building, and there's a, the, the old Capitol building, which is supposed to be really cool too, I right hear. Take the next left onto Main Street. And then tonight we have the live stream because it is Friday, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, that this place has good internet. It's, uh, my, my plan is to stay, to stay at the fairgrounds. They're supposed to have 300 sites, and they said, you know, you don't need to make a reservation or anything, so.
you say anything, I know. Hannibal, it's right here, 30 miles. I was there last year, briefly, and I'll be back, but not on this trip. <laughs> Out of this trip, you have to save something. You know, you give yourself a, give yourself an excuse, as if I needed one, to return to, to Missouri. Well, that certainly qualifies. Here we are, about to cross the Mississippi which is not the halfway point in the country, not by any means, but it is definitely the psychological halfway point. Fun fact, radio and TV station call signs west of here start with a K. From now on, they start with a W. We are now in Quincy, Illinois. And whenever you cross state lines, there are subtle differences. The state route sign almost looks like a speed limit sign. I have to be aware of that. Uh, look at that, national route. I just realized we're on the Great River Road. We're gonna do the Great River Road for probably 11 miles here. That, that was unintended. At some point I want to do the, the, the Great River Road, the whole thing, both sides. And... Now crossing the Illinois River. Here we are, we've made it. Springfield, Illinois, the state capital, the capital of the land of Lincoln. As I mentioned, we're staying at the Illinois State Fairgrounds, although I think I went in through the wrong entrance. This is nice, though. And there's always a bug that decides to end its days on the GoPro lens. Yeah, I don't even think I'm supposed to be here. So how do I get out? There are some rigs here, but I don't see the office. Here's a racetrack? Hmm. Let me retrace my steps and get out and re-enter through the correct entrance. This is it, gate 11. Wow, this place is huge! Let's go real quick and pay Abe our respects since we are so close. And then what I'm going to do tomorrow morning... Um... Yeah, tomorrow will be another day. This is called the Lincoln Park. Take the next right on the Monument Avenue I don't think continue the, straight. I don't think the Google lady knows where she's going. It turns out the Google lady was right. And here we are, Oak Ridge Cemetery the final resting place of President Abraham Lincoln. This is it, Lincoln's tomb, with its prominent obelisk. In the times before COVID, it was a tradition to rub Lincoln's nose for good luck. Let's step inside the mausoleum. There are eight statues depicting various different phases of Lincoln's life. Here's the burial room. Here we go. 
for some reason they don't allow access to the to the upper level, but let's just walk around the whole place. By the way, it is such a beautiful day here today in in Illinois. It's probably the high 60s Fahrenheit, maybe even higher, maybe 70. And they're just blue skies and yeah. Here's a sign marking the temporary vault where Lincoln was interred until the construction of the mausoleum. Let's go for a stroll around this historic cemetery, which is, by the way, the second most visited in the United States, after Arlington. Here we are by Lincoln's tomb once again. The four bronze statues at the corners represent the infantry, navy, artillery and cavalry during the Civil War period. There's once again Lincoln's shiny nose, which we're not supposed to touch anymore. Look at all these planes, the airport must be nearby. Here's the custodian's residence, built in 1895 and later expanded. Let's go for a quick drive around town and uh, maybe tomorrow morning then we'll, we'll visit more stuff. Well, here we are this beautiful afternoon driving along all these old houses towards the area with all the historic Abraham Lincoln sites and the old and the new Capitol buildings. There's that famous sculpture by the Lincoln Library and yeah, he's pretty much everywhere, ever present here in Springfield. Let's stop by the old Capitol building. The old Capitol building here was built in the Greek Revival style between 1837 and 1840 and it served as the fifth state house from 1840 to 1876. Next, let's go by Lincoln's home. Okay, this is the Lincoln Home National Historic Site here. They normally offer tours of the house, but it is temporarily closed. The street has been preserved as it would have looked back in the day. Abraham Lincoln and his family lived here from 1844 until 1861 when he became president. It was actually the only home he ever owned. This is the spot from which the house has been photographed the most. They even have several fake cameras set up here. Lots of historic houses here on South 8th Street. Historic vehicles too. Yeah, very, very nice to see all these very well-preserved historic houses. I mean, the whole street is historic. 
Now it is time to go because it is Friday and at 6 p.m. Eastern, I'm doing my live stream. Yeah, I'm gonna make it in the nick of time. Take not, the a, next right on not, the <laughs> not a minute to spare for the live stream. I'm sure everybody is there already waiting. But I'll make it, I'll make it. Continue on South 6th Street for one and a half miles. All I have to do is change the, the date on the, on the on the software and, and, and click on start stream and that's it. Such a beautiful afternoon. I mean, perfect magic hour lighting. I really like that LED strip on my awning, Minitini 2. And just like that, another day comes to an end. Well, good morning. Pretty cool morning here in, uh, in Springfield. It's like 50, 54 degrees. And this morning was in the 40s, but you know, it's, it's gonna go up to 70 or so in the afternoon. I mean, fall is in the air for sure. Uh, yeah, this is the other part of the RV park that it's, uh, it's on concrete. Yeah, let's do like a two hour tour uh, of um, Springfield. We might go in, into some of the... Head south know. on North uh, 8th Street toward East Singerman Avenue. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Can you feel Lincoln's omnipresence everywhere in this town? And you ain't seen nothing yet. There's more. This is the current Capitol building, and here's a statue of 26-year-old Martin Luther King. It is located at Freedom Corner, facing Abraham Lincoln. This is the tallest non-skyscraper Capitol building in the whole nation, even taller than the US Capitol in Washington, DC. Here's a Lincoln sculpture by sculptor Andrew O'Connor. Construction of the building took 20 years, from 1868 to 1888, built in the French Renaissance and Italianate architectural styles. It is a beautiful building. It is definitely one of those capital buildings that looks uh, almost, yeah, it's like a palace. It's like a, like a lavish palace. It's beautiful. Yeah, it says entrance closed. And let me tell you, this is one of those capital buildings that I would love to see inside. I, I, can, I can tell, you know, it has those uh, high ceilings. I mean, look at the, at the height of, of each of the floors. It almost looks like like a, like something from Paris, in a sense. What what's the name of that architecture? I forget the name. I think I'm thinking of the Second Empire style, but according to the Book of Knowledge, it is French Renaissance. So we'll go with that.
Check it out. It is historic Route 66. Right here. Well, now I know which street I'm gonna take on my way out of here. Let's just do historic Route 66. Not all the way to Chicago. I don't, I don't wanna go to Chicago, but historic Route 66. We might do a short section. Why not? Here we have another Lincoln by Union Station. Yeah, that's because of Ginsburg. The statue depicts Lincoln facing east towards Washington. The title, A Greater Task, refers to Lincoln's farewell address as he became president-elect. Across the street, we have the Presidential Library Museum, with this larger-than-life sculpture called Return Visit, which shows Lincoln discussing the Gettysburg address with a modern man. It is, by the way, only a temporary exhibit. We definitely have to spend more time in this city on a future date. Oh, there comes the Cruise America. Let me tell you, it is a pretty impressive statue here. Imposing, it's really big. It's called uh, Return Visit by Seward Johnson. Okay, even if I wanted to go in, I would have to buy a ticket online or call. All right. I'm just gonna do the outside of all these places today. This here is the Presidential Library. Now, open for research by appointment only, and in any case, <clears throat> research hours Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. It's Saturday, so nope. <laughs> Even if I wanted to uh, to go in, it's not it's not in the stars for me to visit any of these places this time around. Check it out. The one place where you can see both Capitol buildings. The old and the new. It was here at the old Capitol building where Abraham Lincoln began his political career. Also where President Barack Obama announced his candidacy for the White House back in 2007. This view, we're gonna start saying goodbye to Springfield. Yeah, Springfield here, pretty cool town, has character. I like, I like, uh, I like it a lot. It's very deserted here on, on Saturday morning. Yeah, this is this is that spot where you can see the two Capitol buildings. Uh, it's it's pretty deserted this morning, and um, and that's a good thing, I guess. There was a farmers market over there, and. Uh, we are actually out of time. Here's Union Station one more time. Tonight we're staying at a town 150 miles to the northeast called Kankakee. And from there, we'll go into our next state, Indiana. All right, time's up. That's a pretty uh, railroad station there. I'm gonna take one last picture here with, uh, with Abraham. And we're gonna get our kicks today. We're gonna get our kicks on Route 66. Well, hello everybody, greetings and salutations. We are on the road again. We're gonna be staying at a KOA. It's, uh, it's just south of Chicago, the name escapes me right now. But before that, we're gonna do a little bit of historic Route 66 because that's how you, what you do, right? And I've never done any segment of Route 66. That's the camp host, very nice guy, the camp host. I stayed here at the fairgrounds, as you saw. Impeccably located, very nice. Driving to the east
stupid I'm more than halfway home I'm getting tired, I'm getting sleepy I've been away for too long Atlanta, Illinois here, very cool town. They have all kinds of quirky attractions and apparently Route 66 used to continue through town and it got rerouted at some point. When I cross the Suwannee River, I'm thinking of a song. I'm getting close, I'm a believer. That tonight I'll be home Driving to the east And going home I got been away For too long Driving to the east And going home I got been away For too long Finally, here we are. Seems like a nice campground. Too bad it is just for one quick overnight. This is my site here, pretty cool. Busy campground though. It is time for another RV cooking show. We'll begin with some garlic minced, olive oil, we've got mushrooms, I forgot to show you, but I chopped an onion too. Salt and pepper. I've got this pepper and onion blend, so let's go for it. Paprika, oregano, and a dash of cumin. My trifecta, some turmeric, and let's be adventurous with some coriander. and some frozen meatballs. Let's cook the pasta. I added some parmesan and decided to switch because the front burner is much stronger. it all up and um, let's partake. Mmm, bon appetit. Actually, it came out really good. I think I'm going to save the Indiana Dunes for the next one. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.